Welcome, everybody. I just want to say thank you so much for making the time this evening to come along and to be here with us. And as I said, we have over 180 people. I think it was 188 the last time I saw who've been registered. So it's fantastic to have you here with us. Um, and I'm going to introduce you to the people here who are with us on the panel in this webinar. And these are the people who for the past 10 months have been meeting weekly and sometimes more than weekly um, as the task and finish group to help us all secure and save Abbey Fields for the community forever. And I'm going to introduce everybody just one by one so you can see them, put a name um, and hear them say a cheery hello. So Howard Biddle. Good evening, everyone. Lovely, thank you, Howard. And Kate Brereton. Hi, everybody. <laughs> and David Jenkins. Hello, everyone. And Anthony Jenkin. Hello. <laughs> Arnold Ferti. Hi to everyone. Hello. And Robert Benstead Smith. Hello, everyone. <laughs> and Daphne Fisher. Hello. Dennis Payne. Hello, everyone. Hello, Dennis. And Max Parrish. Hi, everybody. And myself, Pippa Halings. And what we're going to do this evening is start a session where for the first about 30 minutes, it's in this webinar format. And what we'll do is take you on the journey that we've been. During that time, you will be able to set out some questions that you may have. If you hear us speak and you want to ask some questions, we'd like you to use the Q&A function that you'll see down here on the right hand side of your screen where the icon says Q and A. And if you click on that, you write your question in there. And keep an eye on that, have a look at the questions. You'll be able to see all the questions that people have put, have a look at that. And you'll even see that there's a way to give a thumbs up and click on like for the question that's most interesting and relevant to you or more than one question that's most interesting and relevant to you. And you'll see that the questions get upvoted. Now that just helps us in the order that we put them to the panelists, because you'll be deciding that in terms of which are the ones that are most interesting, but we will get through all of the questions this evening. Um, we promise you when we go into the Q&A session. And then the other is here on the bottom left-hand side, and that's the chat function that you know most of you will know from your Zoom meetings. And in that one, you can chat. So put down thoughts, ideas, reflections, saying hi to somebody who's there you haven't seen for a long time, that's chatting. Um, and we'll keep the questions for the panelists in the Q&A session. I'm now going to start the presentations that we have for you this evening. And what we're going to talk about is the land itself. And you're going to have a guided tour through our pieces of treasure land, those two pieces of very, very treasured land. And then we're going to tell you about the journey so far. What have we been doing over these 10 months? What have we achieved? And then what's happening now, the fact that we're creating a new charity to own the land and a new friends group to manage that land together with you. And that's the way that you get involved. And then the fact that we need to do the fundraising to make this all come true. And then that will be followed by the Q&A session. And for that, what we're going to do is we're going to go into another room. So when we get to that time in about a half an hour's time, there'll be another link. We'll leave this room and we'll come into another Zoom meeting where we can see each other and we're all cozy. And that's where we'll have the chat and Q&A. And we'll make sure you've got the link for that second session when we get to that time. And now I'd like Daphne to help us giving a guided tour around these very, very precious pieces of land. Daphne. Um, next slide, please. 
Abbey Fields is our name for two areas of land sold with Abbey Farm. They're on the northwest edge of Histon, sandwiched between the urban area and the wide expanse of arable fields. The Croft Close set aside is half a mile from Histon Post Office. Um, there's a gate to it at the end of Croft Close. This is the one outlined in red here. Um, and it's bounded on its north and east side by um, Guns Lane, the bridle path. Long Meadow is also just 10 minutes walk from the centre of the village. Um, and it, you'll find it along behind the big hedge that runs along Park Lane. Um, at Long Meadow, the purple bit, um, the spinney at the top north corner is part of our land that we are buying. Um, but the eastern end of it um, was excluded when the land was sold um, to the new owners of Abbey Farm. Next slide, please. Long Meadow is a charming piece of classic, classic English countryside. You're going to do the next slide, Pippa, that's it. <laughs> um, there are wildflowers in the meadow in the spring. You can see bees and butterflies. Um, if you sit down for a picnic, you can hear the crickets chirping or the grasshoppers. Um, the Beck Brook runs along one side. Um, the bankside vegetation is quite botanically interesting. And it's also interesting to the water voles, which like to eat it. Um, water voles have been seen here several times and there are you. United Kingdom Biodiversity Action Plan priority species, which is vulnerable to extinction in the United Kingdom. There are on Long Meadows stately open grown field trees, horse chestnut, lime and sycamore, and there are more big trees in the spinney I mentioned earlier. There's also a really big hedge, um, which is a great place for birds to nest in, as, in, as are the big trees. Uh, next slide, please. And here's a picture of a little owl that Martin Minerick took. Um, very lucky to spot that one. Um, taking both sites together, there are at least 53 species of birds seen, including 21 species of conservation concern in the United Kingdom, such as the linnet, the yellowhammer, and the spotted flycatcher. Next slide, please. The Croft Close set aside, on the other hand, um, is entirely wilder, full of secret paths and surprises. It was ploughed it was a ploughed field just over 20 years ago with, with uh, mat mature trees and shrubs around the boundaries. But now it's full of seedlings and saplings of trees, uh, but none of them can be more than 22 years old. Um, there are areas of young woodland, oak, ash and field maple mostly, but um, with some surprises like the walnuts and the home oak trees. There are dense thickets of blackthorn, hawthorn, and bramble and wild roses. There are some long grass with wild flowers and there's some rabbit grazed short turf with tiny flowers. Next slide, please. Such as the changing forget-me-not, which only occurs at two other locations in Cambridgeshire. We have recorded 130 species of plant on the Croft Close set aside so far. Next slide, please. There are two ponds, one on the south boundary, which has been dry for years, but miraculously filled up with water this winter and is still holding water. The east pond, although smaller, is absolutely full of wildlife. Um, this is a newt that Myra photographed in that pond. Um, there are also frogs there and dragonflies, diving beetles, um, and these all attract grass snakes. Um, and we've also seen uh, a lizard there recently. All the reptiles and amphibians are protected in British law. Mammals come to the pond to drink, foxes, muntjac deer, badgers. In fact, if you keep your eyes open, you will notice towards the end of this presentation, a photo that Moira took when um, a fox and a muntjac deer arrived at the pond at the same time. The pond is also vital for turtle doves. Next slide, please. Because they feed their chicks on dry seeds and they need to be able to carry water in their crops along with the seeds to feed their chicks. Um, they need um, long grass, uh, wildflowers that produce seeds near to their nesting site so that they can feed as well. Um, this is the picture, a picture of our turtle dove, which arrived on the cross close set aside on the 28th of April, um, back from its wintering grounds on the other side of the Sahara Desert. And that was the very day that the sale contracts were exchanged for the cross close set aside in Long Meadow. Turtle doves are classified as vulnerable in the IUCN's red list of threatened species. That is, 
this species is threatened worldwide. There are other species on the land which we don't know about yet. There are certainly going to be small mammals, insects, fungi, mosses, and no one's done those surveys yet. Next slide, please. And this is my last slide. The living thing which was at this site first, um, it's the ancient veteran oak tree in the southwest corner. Um, and it, we think that it may be over 500 years old. Thank you. Daphne, thank you so much. We you're just enchanting and and we all feel that we're there in this incredible land with you so thank you very very much for just taking us to the heart of what this is all about so thank you now if we talk about how we got to where we are i'd like to invite howard to you can you tell us a little bit about the journey so far yeah thanks daphne for that uh, presentation i mean if anyone is any in any doubt as to why we wanted to secure these two fields for the community and when they came up for sale then I'm sure that, that you will be in no doubt after, after Daphne's presentation and um, so immediately the, the farm came up for sale a group of us got to got together to see how we could preserve the, the sites forever in perpetuity the legal term but I prefer the term forever and discourage development, any, any sort of housing development. And so was formed the Task and Finish Group. And this is a very brief outline of our journey so far. And I emphasize so far because there is still a huge amount of work to do. And the rest of the presentation this evening is all to do with what happens next. But so far, all of our stars, and I'm, I'm no astrologer, but all our stars have been been aligned. It's it's absolute first for me in, in, in a long career that all of the pieces of the jigsaw came together and have fitted. So, so so far so good. And let me go through some of those things which which have come together. And the groundwork for conservation and and re resisting development were already in place. I mean. The land has been used for dec decades by the, the community. Um, and, and so consequently, when we started a rights of way campaign, there were lots of people who were willing to, to, to subscribe and, and to help. The, both, both fields are in the green belt and a number of planning per permissions or, or, or um, a, a proposals for, for, for planning permission had been turned down in, in recent years, and that of course also discouraged developers. And, and finally, the, the neighborhood plan, and the ink was hardly dry on the, on the paper. And the huge amount of work had been done for, in, into that, into looking at what we wanted to do as, as a community. And the overriding preference for the, from the community was that we wanted more green space and, and, um, and, and walking areas and preferably not to have development in these two in, in, in these two fields. Now this is, this is a strange point to make but COVID has been awful for everyone but I like to also look at some some of the positives that which have which have come from it and one positive is that everyone has been more since the first lockdown has been focused more on the countryside on country walks and of course, we've all had a lot more time and certainly it's given the, the task and finish group a lot of time, or speaking personally, um, to, to try and do something about preserving these spaces. The local media were simply amazing in the support that they've, uh, that they've given. I, I've never used Facebook before, but thanks to Moira and, 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 and Luke, um, I was initiated and and then High Hub with, with Amanda Borrell was amazing, lots of support. Elizabeth uh, Sadler with, with Network has been dogged in, in supporting us all the way. And Cambridge Independent has produced a couple of very interesting pieces or very useful pieces, one of which was only published this week. Frankly, the, 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 the media coverage was so strong that the 
the Tusk and Finnish group haven't been leading this exercise. We've been running hard just to keep up with the rest of the community. And it's been so helpful in, in the Rights of Way campaign and also in, in securing lots of support for the, for the pledges. The, the parish council have given both, they've been with us all the way and they've given both practical and strategic support. During the, the first lockdown, they made sure that network was delivered to every house in, in, the, in the villages. The, 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 the parish council gave the, the task and finish group the authority to act. <clears throat> they, they gave us the, the, the credibility within the community to, to act, whereas just a group of um, individuals wouldn't have been able to do that. Now, unfortunately, the parish council haven't been able to buy the land outright, but they are acting as guarantor, and that's just so useful for the future of this project. Now, there, there are just so many people who have contributed to, to this effort. I would love to go through a, a long list of the special people who have, who, have, who have helped on this, but it's too long. So I'm just going to limit myself to thanking the entire community and certainly of the, all of the people who are here tonight for supporting what we're doing. We couldn't have done it without you. But there are three very, very special players who I would like to, to highlight, highlight. And the first is the, the Watson family who have bought Abbey Farm. They have supported us the whole way. In fact, it was a condition of them buying Abbey Farm that the two fields be sold to the community. So it would have been a no deal without the, with the, with the, without the village activity. And of course, that has now been sold on to, on to us. Sally London is a critical player and probably news to most of you tonight that she will be buying Long Meadow outright and then granting a, a free long-term lease to the community until the point when she will bequeath it in her will to the community at zero cost. So Long Meadow is already secure. And, and finally, I would like to mention the Jenking family. Um, to, to do this project, we had to act extremely quickly. And we couldn't have gone through normal public channels to, to create organizations and charities and so on and so forth. We needed someone to come up with the money immediately, buy the land, and then sort out all of the problems later. And that person was Anthony Jenking, and of course his, his, his family. They've been acting as bankers. It's only a temporary organization, but um, I, you know, Anthony will say a few words, but just before I hand over to Anthony, I'd say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you everybody for the support that you've given. Over to Anthony. Thanks, Howard. Um, I think you said pretty much everything I was gonna say, but I'll say it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so, so hello everyone. For those that you don't know me, my name's Anthony Jenking. I've lived in and around the village since 1998. And until 2016, I actually owned a business on Vision Park. Um, and as the temporary custodian of Abbey Fields, I thought it was quite important to put a face to the name and reassure you that the land's in safe hands whilst we work towards the best solution for its future. So like many of you, my wife, Bagusia, and I were really worried when the land went up for sale. We were concerned that our village might lose this precious green space forever. And it's land that we personally walk on almost every day and on which our son enjoys some of his finest muddy puddles. So we really wanted to act to protect it. And as usual, our village surprised and humbled us uh, with its talent and energy and enthusiasm. The, uh, the task and finish group mobilized incredibly quickly and we were very happy to step forward and make the purchase on behalf of the village whilst this longer term plan that you're hearing about now were, was put in place. So I, I too just want to take this opportunity to thank everyone for their support and dedication to this project. It's an amazing achievement for our village and it couldn't happen couldn't have happened without the involvement of so many people and especially the parish council and the Watson family and my fellow committee members shout out to you finally I've met you all in person but for the first nine months on zoom um, it was a, a an interesting weekly uh, meeting that we all had so with that I just want to say to everyone please keep all your pledges and support coming we've still got a long way to go and we need all of your help so thanks very much see you soon
Thank you. So here's a round of applause, everybody, from the panel to all of you as well who are attending. So thank you to everybody in the community. That's fantastic. And thank you very much, Anthony, for that. And now, Rob, do you want to sort of tell us, okay, what's what next then? Uh, right. Yes. So um, the, the mechanism was put in place. The pledges from so many people uh, gave us the confidence to, to move forward. The parish council gave us the security. So we are only halfway there, though. We've got uh, more to do. And there, I'm going to just summarize three key steps that we have to take, and then you'll hear more about them. So one step is setting up a charity to own the land. And uh, this is a legal process to go through. Um, we've already started that process, but it may take three or four months. Um, then there is establishing a, a new supporters group or friends group, whatever it may be called, to uh, provide the support and actually manage the land. And lastly, there is the need, as has already been emphasized, to do the fundraising. As, uh, the land has been acquired through a loan. We've now got to do the fundraising to um, pay that loan back. And so next slide, please. So the, the charity, um, which is called the Histon and Impington Green Spaces Charity, Charitable or Incorporated Organization, that's the body that will actually own the land in perpetuity once all the funds have been raised. And it will, it has just uh, six trustees, that's all, three from the parish council and three from the community. So we wanted a kind of balance between the parish council and um, community members nominated by the group of supporters. Mm -hmm. And their role as, um, the, as the charity, apart from actually owning the land and being responsible for it in law, um, is to ensure that it is managed in line with the original vision. That's conserving the, the character and biodiversity of the places, uh, enabling access for public enjoyment of, the, of these two places, um, facilitating educational activities, and also preserving the archaeological heritage. It's an important part of the village heritage, this, this area of the village. Um, it will actually entrust the daily management of, the, of both sites to this friends group, the new friends group, and that will be a much wider membership group. So you can see there's a kind of two tiers of, um, of governance here. So you have one hands-off organization that owns it and just is the custodian of the big vision, if you like, custodian to make sure that um, it is managed as we uh, as everybody is envisaging who's joining this great project. And then the day-to-day the -day management and support in the hands of the friends group. Next slide. You can do it after the, um, after this one. Um, the new friends group, uh, today is the day when, when we kind of press the button and start forming that. So you can be an early mover and um, be, we hope many of, with so many people in the chat, we'll get lots of uh, members for the group um, expressing interest. Uh, so apart from obviously making financial contributions as supporters, which would be great, there's also opportunities to volunteer, be that on the land, uh, helping keep the paths clear, for example, or behind the scenes with fundraising, uh, outreach to members, writing newsletters, uh, doing administrative tasks. There's lots of ways to help. Participating in educational activities will also be possible. And then um, in due course, that friends group will nominate, will, will um, not only nominate the three community members for the charity, but also actually have a committee that's overseeing the management of the land itself. And that will be an elected committee, maybe one or two co-opted as well. And whatever way you want to participate, you can sign up on the website on, online there and it gives you the opportunity to say how you want to get involved and we hope you will. Thank you. Thank you so much, Rob. And I'd like to invite Kate now to sort of take us through um, the issue of money. <laughs> Thank you, Pippa, and good evening, everybody. Um, so if you've heard from a few of us on the group now, um, all the stars were aligned, and I'm so thrilled that we've got this far on this project. But we are only halfway there, and I think this is a really key message that I want to get across to the community. Um, this land has become 
been secured with a temporary loan from the Jenkin family, which is amazing, but we still need to raise the funds. Um, and we're going to raise the funds to purchase this land for the community forever. That is our aim. So you can see there that our fundraising target is a cool half a million pounds, 500,000 pounds. And that comprises the capital cost of both pieces of land, um, all of the costs associated with purchasing the land and a little bit in there for maintenance over the first two to three years. We're not actually going to start collecting donations, actual money right now. We're going to wait until the charity has been registered with the Charity Commission. Um, and there's lots of reasons for doing that. But the main one for me is that when, when we're registered, we will be able to collect gift aid um, on the individual donations. And that's going to make up actually quite a sizable sum on this project. So we're not collecting real money, but we are collecting pledges, which I'll tell you about in a moment. We're going for three main sources to raise this money. Um, individual donations from the community. We're gonna go out to local companies and actually maybe even national companies too. And we're gonna look for the grants that are available for environmental conservation. But the individual donations are absolutely key, not least because a lot of companies and a lot of grant awarding bodies want to see that the community has already raised a significant amount of money um, before they will go and match that. So the individual donations are gonna be the bedrock of the fundraising. Next slide. So um, I want to say that any size pledge is welcome, but we have designed a kind of unit of fundraising for this project, which we've called the Croft. And the Croft is equivalent to a 50 pound donation. So we've got 10,000 Crofts in total. And so we're really hoping that people will maybe pledge a Croft or several, or get together with friends and family to pledge a Croft or sev several, or even maybe get together with members of your community organization um, to pledge a Croft on, on their behalf. Um, and if you do that, you'll get a personalised certificate with lots of lovely photographs of the land that you can hang up on your wall um, and also free access to talks that we plan for the year and any kind of family and educational events um, that we're planning to run over the year too. Um, so, oh, and the other thing is you can gift a croft. So we thought that would make a rather unusual and unique gift. So if you've got someone's birthday coming up um, or if you're thinking about Christmas, a little bit early yet, but um, Christmas is coming, uh, please do think about pledging a croft um, and that money will go towards securing these very special pieces of land. Next slide. So how are we doing? Um, we are doing incredibly well. And again, I just want to say a big thank you. I think all of us in this group have been overwhelmed by the response to our um, campaign so far. Just to acknowledge Sally again, as Howard said, Sally has pledged £170,000 to purchase Long Meadow. So already from the get-go, that was a third of our fundraising target. I've had over 200 pledges from other members of the community of all different kinds of sizes, equaling £175,000, which is amazing. Thank you so much. That's another third. So we're kind of two thirds of the way there with pledges. Brilliant. So we've got 3,100 crofts to go. And I'm 100% confident that we can do this if everybody gets involved. Next slide. So how can you help? Um, and these are things that you can do like right now after this meeting. So if you're sitting there and, and you haven't quite got around to making a pledge yet, please do make a pledge online towards these wonderful pieces of land. It's easy. Get onto our website, abbeyfields.online. There's a button there. All you do is fill in your details. That gets transferred across to me and it goes into my database. If you have pledged, and I know some of you pledged quite a long time ago. Some of you pledged kind of last summer. Um, hold on to the money, please. Um, don't spend it. We are going to need it. And if you've forgotten how much you've pledged, a couple of people messaged me last week and said, Kate, we've kind of forgotten how much. Don't worry. Just contact me, kate at abbeyfields.online, and I'll look it up on the database and, and let you know. 
Um, other ways to get involved. I would love if people would come along and help me out with this fundraising. I am not a professional fundraiser. I just have a passion and a love for this land and I wanted to make this project happen. Um, fundraising wise, we've got things coming up. We've got the feast market stall. So it'd be great if you want to help me set that up and run that, that would be amazing. Um, we also need to start looking out for grants. I would so value if anybody's got grant writing skills skills or experience I would really value if you could come forward and contact me about that because I've never done a grant before um, so that would be great or if you've just got any other fundraising ideas um, that we can go forward with um, as Rob said you can also help to build this friends group and we're going to need people with all different kinds of skills maybe you can write newsletters for us maybe you can take the photographs that go in the newsletters website stuff communications admin there'll be lots to do and you can sign up to volunteer to do that on the website. So sign up.abbeyfields.online. Really, really easy. Um, and again, as Rob said, please do volunteer to help manage the land. You know, maybe fundraising isn't quite your thing, maybe websites aren't quite your thing, but maybe you can pull on a pair of wellies, pull on a pair of gardening gloves, pick up some loppers um, and come and help us manage the land. And the first practical volunteer task for managing the land is coming up Saturday the 19th of June. We're going to be clearing the paths on the Croft Close set aside. Please register. If you want to come along and do that, that's great. Please do register on the website because we need to keep an, an eye on numbers so to make sure that we're sticking by the COVID rules. Next slide. And what can you look out for over the coming weeks and months? Um, so yes, you will have gathered by the question on Menti um, that we are going to run a naming competition for the Croft Close set aside. <laughs> it trips me up every time I say that. It's not really um, the kind of name that trips off your tongue. Uh, so we think this is an ideal opportunity to go out to the community and gather suggestions for what we can call that piece of land and to pass that name down into future generations. So look out for publicity. Give us your suggestions. We'll then form a shortlist um, and we'll ask everybody to vote. Come and see us at Feast Week. So I said, I'm gonna be there on the Feast Market stall. Um, come and say hello, I would love to meet you. Um, I'm probably even better. Daphne's gonna run some guided walks on the land during Feast Week. And as you've heard, she's so knowledgeable um, about the land. Uh, she's amazing. So please do look out for those and you'll be able to book those. Details will be in the Feast Week program or on our website. Um, and then finally, but by no means, you know, the least, this is really, really important. We are hoping to run a face-to-face -face meeting for supporters in kind of late June, July time. We're waiting for the government's um, announcement, obviously on the 21st of June to see how we're gonna be able to do that. But I would personally love to get to know everybody and shape ideas about this project in a face-to-face -face setting, preferably over a cup of tea and with a piece of cake. So look out for the date for that. I will make sure it's publicized over all the you usual village channels. Um, and thank you very much. Thanks so much, Kate. Thanks to everybody. So what did we cover just then um, within sort of 30, 35 minutes? The land, how precious it is, a lovely guided tour by Daphne around that land. The journey so far, you know, with Howard, how did we get there as a task and finish group with the help of so many people, all of you and so many others, how we've managed to get to the point where we are, where it's secured with a temporary loan. And then how are we going to build the charity, which can then receive the funds and own the land and the friends group, which will enable us as a community association, membership association to get involved in and help us with managing all of this and all the different aspects that Kate's just mentioned. And then finally, the fundraising, how we can now build, be good on the pledges that were made raise the additional third of money that's needed. And already I see from Anthony that already eight people have signed up for volunteering just while we're in this session, which is absolutely fantastic news. And that's what's been all the time. It's just this incredible spirit of wanting to join, um, to join in. So, you know, once again, this unique opportunity to secure 15 acres over these two pieces of land, Long Meadow and Croft Close set aside. An Abbey Farm was sold on the 11th of May 2021 after being in the Rowley family since the 19th century. So that sale was pretty momentous. 
Um, and that's a 39 acre estate that was once part of a farm of which have been carved out now these two pieces of land, 15 acres in total, that have now been secured, which we hope we can actually now own and manage for the community forever. For four objectives, nature conservation, public benefit through public access, for leisure, education, and heritage because there's wonderful heritage all around these sites as well, which we'd all love to know more about. And we can get guided tours from Arnold and the Village uh, Archaeological Society about those too. Thank you so much, everybody. If you look now at the Q&A box, and in the Q&A box, everybody has already started upvoting the questions that you find most interesting and relevant. So you'll find that um, you've put these likes on there. So if you haven't had a chance to do that now, have a look now. Click on the thumb of the question that you find you know, really interesting. And we're going to close this session. It's like closing the door on this session, which is the big sort of webinar room. And we're going to go along now, grab a cup of tea and go into a lovely cozy room where we're going to be able to see all of you. And we're going to be able to answer those questions and have a bit of a have a bit of a chat.